I want to touch on some maintenance things on this wheel here. You will see we have a warning on the front of the machine. It says deflate tires before unbolting two-piece wheel rims. Not following this will put you in a very bad mood. And what I mean by that is these wheels, they have, there's an inner um, hub, I guess, and I guess this is the outer, outer hub and an inner hub. Uh, and you will see there's four bolts in here. Let's say hypothetically you're, you're out moving a trailer around and you run over a nail and you get a nail stuck inside your tire, your tire goes flat, you're like, oh man, what do I do? Well, if the tire's flat, that's, that's easy. But if the tire's still got some air pressure in it, I want you to undo this you know, tire inflation cover and the valve stem in here you're gonna have to remove. To do that, I'll show you quickly how that works. You can get these little tools here. So this is the one I actually I just welded onto a screwdriver, but that's a tire valve removal tool. And you're gonna stick that in there. So you'll hear the air pressure in here, so the air's coming out. And this might be kind of loud. This is what the tire valve looks like. Right there, you remove that, but it's critical that you get the air out of that tire because when you undo those four bolts, these two halves split apart, and the pressure inside there, if it's not released, will blow that rim across the room or it could hurt you very badly. So that's critical that you're aware of that safety issue. Another maintenance thing I wanna go through is what happens if my chain becomes loose? So I'm gonna show you how to get the chain the right amount of tension and how to adjust it. To do this, we need to flip the machine over. So we're going to remove the ball stand. So this guy is going to come out. We'll set it out of the way. We need to remove the batteries. So we're going to look this up. Unclip our battery, quick connects. And we're just going to pull these guys out. We're going to close the lid and we want to remove our handle because I want to flip this thing upside down and lay it on the ground. Take this clip out and out this guy comes. Okay, so doing this on the ground, it doesn't need to be up on a table. We can do it right on the ground. Uh, I just happen to be on a table. So we're just going to pick up the back end here. And like that, it actually stays balanced. It's fairly easy. I'm just going to walk it back a bit because I'm on a table. But with the lid down like this, you can turn around and just set it right on the lid. So you're just going to go right over. There it is, and it'll sit there just fine. For this job, you're going to need two 7 16 wrenches and a socket with an extension and a 9 16 socket. So you'll see here, my chain is really loose. That's no good. So, on our motor mounting plate, you're gonna see four nuts here that secure the motor to the frame. So we just wanna make sure that those are all loose. And you just want them loose. You don't want them too loose so that the motor plate can just slide back and forth. And you'll see here these slots that the motor slides back and forth in. Now you're going to see down here is a quarter inch bolt that gives us our chain tension. So what we want to do is we'll just slide the motor back and holding the bolt and then with our finger we can just kind of get that so it's somewhat snug. And now we're going to take our two 7 16 wrenches. So I want to hold one on the head of the bolt and then the other one here I'm just going to turn it and this is now what's pushing the motor mount plate up against the frame. So I'm gonna keep turning that until we get our chain tension. And what I'm looking for is the thickness of that chain. I wanna be able to deflect the chain, basically that same amount of thickness, which is maybe 3 eighths of an inch deflection, is all I want. So I'm gonna go just a bit more. A tiny bit more, I think. All right, so basically the thickness of the chain, I want to deflect to the side when I push on it. Now, this second nut here, we're going to spin it down. I'll show you that again. 
and spin that down. And I'm going to put my wrench on this nut. Now this one, I'm going to tighten that up. So we're basically jamming the two nuts against the motor mount plate. So I'm going to tighten that pretty good. Okay. So that jams this assembly together. And now I simply just tighten these four nuts back up. And we're ready to go. And you want to be make this fairly snug. I don't know what a torque rating is. Maybe 50 foot-pounds. But you want it fairly snug. Okay. Chain to be ready to go. And if you find... Your chain is too tight. It's okay to loosen it a little bit, but you don't want it super, super tight because that's causing too much stress on the unit. You flip the machine back over and you're ready to go. The tires on this machine are adjustable in air pressure. The reason we chose an air fill tire is if you get into a situation where you find the tires are slipping and you're not getting the traction that you want, Reduce the air pressure by about five pounds on each side. Try it again and if you need to keep reducing it until you get the traction you're after But you never want to have the rim riding on the ground. So make sure you have You know an, at least enough pressure like you know, no less than 15 pounds in the tire On the back wheel You will notice that nowhere is there. There is no air fill nipple. This is a foam filled solid tire now I can squeeze it a little bit, but it is solid, it's full of foam, and that gives us a better load rating on the back end. Um, last thing I think is, you will see these main wheel bearings. There's a grease nipple on each side. Now these things come already pre-greased and packed with grease, and they're a very robust, heavy duty bearing. But maybe once a year you want to just give it a little shot of grease on each side as a routine annual service item. And I think that concludes all the service and maintenance items you would need to know about the TX6000.